Hey students, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most fundamental um, checkmates that you should know, and that's the two brook checkmate. Now, this is a very important checkmate because it's going to allow you to close so many games. I'm pretty sure that up to this point, you've gotten to situations where you're winning, but you cannot really get that checkmate. And in many instances, your opponent gets to escape and you cannot close your game. So this checkmate is going to allow you to get rid of that. Anytime that you can get your hands on two rooks, or sometimes you just have one rook, but you have an extra pawn, you could march that pawn up, get the second rook, and deliver the checkmate. Of course, this is going to be mainly when you you have the advantage. So this is going to allow you to capitalize and just know exactly what to do to finish the game. So with that said, let me show you how it's done. First, I'm going to show you the final position, like the, the actual checkmate, how you, how you finish it. But then we're going to start from the very beginning when the king is in the center because that's the, the challenging part. How do we corner the king so that we can put him in checkmate? So take a look at this position and I want to see if you could just find checkmate in one move. That's it. So if you want, pause the video if you want to take longer. But the move that we're looking for here is rook to a8 checkmate. So this is the pattern that you're going to see over and over and over. We have one rook cutting the king off, and then the other rook will go down to attack the king. That's it. So rook a8, check, and the king cannot stay here. The king cannot go up. So this is easy because the king is already at the edge. So now what we have to learn is how do we get the king from the center or from anywhere on the board to one of the edges, and then we finish him off right there. So let me bring this king to the center. I'm going to bring the rooks all the way down. And you're going to see how your king has to do nothing at all. So the first thing we have to do is decide what edge we want this king to go to. He could go towards this one, this one, this one, or this one. Now, the logical thing to do here is to push him towards the one that is he's closest to. Like if you go up, it's going to be one, two, three, four. If you go to the right, it's going to go only one, two, and three. So Logically, this one should be faster, but to be honest with you, to me, it's just way easier if I push him away from my king. So if my king is on this edge, I push him to the other edge. If my king happened to be over here, then I'll push him to the other side. It just makes things easier because your king is never going to get in the way of the rooks. So once you decide where you want to send him, and in this case, we're going to push him towards this end, we're going to start by cutting him off and... I call this the wall of fire. So I create a wall of fire right before the king, right here. And then think of the fire expanding afterwards. And that's going to force the king to run to that edge that you want him to. Okay, so it doesn't matter which rook you use. Just make sure that you cut off the king right here. So I'm going to use this one. I cut off the king. And then I'm going to use the other rook to go up and attack the king. So basically your rooks are going to take turn. One rook cuts off the king, then his friend is going to come over and attack the king. And it's important that we do it like this, because that way you cover both ranks. So the king cannot move down, and the king cannot stay on this rank. So he's forced to move closer to the edge. So when he does that, now we have to continue to attack him, but we cannot move the rook doing the wall of fire. So this one stays here. So this one goes. He moves down and then the other will go. So it's, a, it's like some people think about it like going up a ladder, so one foot at a time. It doesn't matter what, how you think about it. If it works for you, that's, that's fine. You just have to make sure that you remember it. So he goes down. Now, which rook do we move to attack the king? Well, this one is cutting the king off, so I have to send the other rook. Check. He needs to go down. And then finally, this is the position we had before. We go checkmate. That's it. That's all it takes to put him in checkmate. Now, some of you might be asking yourself, okay, what if the king goes and attacks the rooks? That could happen. But now that you know the pattern, or more or less what we're working towards, let's take a look at that other variation. Now, this time I'm going to start with this rook. I'm cutting off the king. The wall of fire is up. And this time you're going to see that the king is going to start walking towards the rooks. So I have the wall of fire. My other rook goes up to the next rank, check. And this time he keeps going towards the edge and he's attacking my rook now. Now the only thing you have to do here, he has to click. 
king next to the rooks, I just move my rooks to the other side of the board. So think of it like there, there's a ladder here, and then there's another ladder on the other side. So if this one is not safe anymore, we just run to the other ladder and we continue doing the same thing. Just remember that the rooks are faster than the king. So when you do this, the king is going to have a hard time to get to the rook again. It's going to take so long. Now, if the king keeps going here, it's not safe for me to go to the next rank. So I just go to the other side as well. Now, the important thing here to remember is that the rooks cannot be on the same file. Because if that happens, then I cannot move to the next rank. If I had done this move, let's say the king goes back, you see I cannot jump over to get to the next rank. So that's why it's important that we stop right here. Right now, look at this king. He's on the other side, and it's going to take him a long time to get to the rooks. So now when he moves, which of the two rooks do I move? Well, this is the one building the wall of fire. So I need the other rook to go down. Say check. And again, the two rooks are controlling the two ranks. He's forced to get closer to the edge. So he's going towards the rooks again. We, I keep taking turns. Check. And then the moment the king gets close to the rooks again, it clicks. Okay, I have to go to the other side. So I keep the wall of fire. He's going to go here. He knows that if I go here, he's going to take me. So that's okay. I'm going to go to the other side. And now checkmate in one move. We know the pattern. Checkmate. That's it. So this is all it takes for you to do the checkmate. Notice that your king didn't do anything. It was just the two rooks. Now, guys, let me just do one more thing. Because I want you to be able to deliver this checkmate from any position, like I said before. So let's say I just move things around. I'm just going to go put this really awkward here. I'm going to put the king. Now we're going to do it from this random position. And you have to be able to do it like this because you never know where your pieces are going to be when you get to a to rook and king versus king. So you have to really understand the pattern and make it work no matter what. So all I know is that I want this king to go to this edge. Like I said, you could do it however you like, but to me it's always easier to push him to the edge opposite to where my king is. So if my king is on this side of the board, I want him to go to this edge. So for that, I just need to create the wall of fire right here, and then the fire will expand, and he's going to run to that edge that I want him to run to. So for all I know is that I need one of the rooks right here. So I'm going to bring any rook. I'm gonna bring this one. Now he's going to move, and my wall of fire is right there. If he attacks a rook, well, I need to stay on the wall of fire. So I'm going to the other side as far as I can. He's going back up. Now I need the other rook to attack him from here. So I go down, and there I start. Check. The king has to go down, and then the other rook. They're taking turns. And look, he's getting so close to my rooks. That's okay. I go to the other side attacks me, I go to the other side, he's coming back. Now, which of the two rooks do I move? Well, this one that is not doing anything right now. This one is cutting the king off, so his friend comes over, check. He's forced to get to the edge, and then checkmate. So this is it. Um, the best advice I could give you right now is that you practice this at home. Now, one of the ways that I train this with my students is once they got it, we put a timer, I give them 20, 30 seconds and they have to do it in that in that time so have fun with it so i hope this was helpful and i will see you guys in the next class